Hello everyone. Welcome back with another video of our DSA series. So guys, in this video, I'm going to continue with our runtime complexities. So as I already discussed about uh, constant runtime complexities and linear runtime complexities, I have already given you the example, like why we call it as constant and linear runtime complexities. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about another runtime complexities called quadratic runtime complexities. So guys, as you can see, this is the uh, list of the runtime complexities actually uh, I already showed you and we have already discussed this constant and uh, linear runtime complexities. So in this video, I'm going to discuss this quadratic runtime complexities. So as you can see, this quadratic runtime complexity is nothing but it actually looks uh, at every index in an array twice, okay? So guys, uh, to understand this thing actually, so what I will do, I will uh, take the same uh, code example, okay? I have already taken in my previous uh, video, okay? And I will try to uh, make you understand like what it is exactly saying. Uh, so guys, here actually uh, we are discussing something called uh, quadratic runtime complexities. So we usually define these quadratic runtime complexities with the help of this omega of n square. Okay, so this is the quadratic quadratic runtime complexities. So let's take the same. Uh, uh, you can say uh, code. I have already taken one function. I think you remember. So the function name is def uh, print uh, items. Okay, so this is the function I have already taken one example. So it will take one parameter called n, okay, n, n should be the number size, okay. Then I was defining two for loop inside that, so for i in range, okay. So it will iterate through this n, then uh, it will just print the value, okay, print the i value. Then I have taken another for loop here, I think you remember, so for j in range, and it will iterate through n and it will print j. So guys, this is the function and uh, this function runtime complexity is nothing but it's a linear runtime complexities, okay? I have already uh, discussed this part and it will give you one constant, okay? So we, we can usually drop this constant, okay? And why we need to drop the constant, I think I have already discussed like in our drop constant uh, video. So the runtime complexity of this function would be uh, big of n, okay? That means linear runtime complexities, okay? Now we can uh, do some slight modification uh, in this function, okay? Then I can create another function on top of it. So what I will do, I'll just write another function called def print items, okay? The same function I have taken. So it will uh, take n parameter. Then inside that I will define this for loop. So I can define for i in range then it will iterate through n, okay? Then inside that, what I will do, instead of this print, I will take this for loop, okay? Inside this for loop, okay? I'll just write for j in range, and I'll give n here, it will iterate through n. And now what I will do, I'll just print i and j, okay? This two value. Now guys, as you can see, this function has become one nested for loop function, okay? So previously it was separate for loop, as you can see, it was uh, um, outer for loop. But uh, inside this function, as you can see, uh, I have written one for loop, okay, this for loop, and inside that I have written another for loop, that means this for loop, okay. Now it has become one nested for loop, okay. I think you already know what is nested for loop, okay. So guys, what is happening inside this for loop, if you see it carefully, so previously it was just printing uh, this uh, actually value, okay, two time actually, as you can see. First of all, uh, this for loop will print all the value, okay, 0 to n. Then uh, this for loop will start and this will print uh, all the value 0 to n, okay? But I have written this thing in a nested for loop. Now what will happen? Uh, for this for loop actually, uh, this for loop will run n time. So as you can see, first of all, this for loop will run. So here actually value would be 0. And inside uh, we have another for loop. Uh, then it will run n time, okay? n time it will run. Then again, what will happen? Uh, this, uh, you can say control will go here and this for loop again will run and the value would be one and this for loop will run n time, okay? Then once n time is completed, again, control will be go there and again, uh, it would be two and again, this for loop will run n time. So that's how this for loop will run n time, okay? And inside that, this for, for loop will run n time. So that means this for loop is taking some time. Also, this for loop is also taking some time, okay? So uh, this two for loop is taking separate, separate time, okay? Now, uh, what I can do actually, uh, I will just quote this example, okay, on my neural lab and I'll try to uh, like show you what will happen there. Uh, so guys, I'm inside my neural lab. So what I will do inside this bigo, I'm going to create another uh, actually uh, file. I'll just name it as quadratic, okay, quadratic uh, dot pi. 
So now inside that, I'll just uh, copy paste this same function I have written. Okay, so this is the function I think you remember. I already showed you in my board also. Now what I will do instead of this print, I'll just uh, write this for loop inside this for loop. That means I will just make it as nested for loop. And uh, yeah, now I think uh, it is fine. Now what I can do, I can call this uh, function and here I will give 10. Now it will happen. So if I execute this particular uh, file called quadratic.py, so see guys, what is happening? Uh, okay, so here actually I also need to print i, i comma j. Okay, now I think it is fine. Now let me just print it again. Okay, so see guys, what is happening? Uh, this for loop is running and the value of this for loop would be zero okay and inside that this for loop will run n time that means you have given 10 okay so it will run 10 time as you can see 0 1 2 3 4 till 9 okay it will run till 9 because you have uh, started from 0 because it has started from 0 so it will go till 9 okay then again the control will go to this for loop and the value will become 1 and this for loop will run again n time as you can see so again it will run 10 time okay as you can see 10 time then again, it will uh, become two. This value will become two. Again, it will run 10 time. That's how this for loop will run n time, as you can see, which is nothing but 10 time it has run, okay? Then inside that, this for loop will also run 10 time. That means uh, you are running one nested for loop, okay? And like it's doing double operation, okay? As you can see, it's doing double operation. And if you see this for loop is taking time, also this for loop is taking time, okay? So what I will do, uh, so here I'm getting n uh, multiply by n because it is running inside a for loop okay so it would be n square okay now i can define this n square as big o of n square okay and big o of n square is nothing but your quadratic uh runtime complexities okay so that is why we call it as quadratic runtime complexities because as you can see it is doing uh because as you can see uh all the operation is running twice okay in this particular function okay and this is like very uh like bad uh, runtime complexities okay whenever um, i'm talking about my algorithm performance if you are having this kinds of let's say quadratic runtime complexities at that time you can consider this is like very uh worst uh like you can say runtime complexities you are getting okay so we won't be ever actually using this quadratic uh, runtime complexities okay in our code if i if we are having this kinds of quadratic runtime complexities we always try to uh like you can say fix our code and reduce the runtime complexities okay so that is why this is like very uh worst uh actually runtime complexities we can consider inside uh, big o okay now one question uh, would be in your mind uh so let's say if i define another for loop inside this particular for loop so what will happen okay so let's define so i'll just write another for loop i'll just write for uh, k in range okay k in range inside that i will give n then i'll print all the value one by one so i'll just write print uh, i j and k okay now if i execute this particular code quadratic dot pi now see uh it is running actually uh three time okay as you can see uh if i show you so uh, first of all this for loop will run the value would be zero and inside that actually this for loop will run the value would be zero and uh, again inside that this for loop will run and this for loop will run actually n time as you can see which is nothing but 10 time okay 10 time it will run then again uh this for loop will uh actually execute then again actually uh, this for loop will execute okay and value would be one as you can see value would be one then inside that this for loop will run n time as you can see this is running n time okay then this uh, for loop value would be two that's how actually it would be till nine okay as you can see it would be till nine then again this for loop uh, then again this for loop will run okay and value would be one again uh, it will do the same thing okay as i already discussed now if you see uh, it is running actually uh, three times okay three times actually it is running okay three times operation it is doing okay so at that time actually you can uh, write this runtime complexities like that so let me just uh, take a uh, screenshot of this function now we'll open my board now see now if i am talking about this function runtime complexities okay it will become uh, so this is running this for loop is running so this for loop so this for loop is running uh, bigger of n time bigger of n time also uh, this for loop is running bigger of n time this for loop is also running bigger of n time so now if you just multiply all together so n multiply by n multiply by n so we'll getting something called n cube okay so now you can define like that also uh bigger of n cube okay but see 
whether this parameter is three, four or five or six, okay, it can be anything, okay. Instead of writing that thing, what you can do, you can write like that, bigger of n square, okay, bigger of n square, okay. So we'll be considering this uh, runtime complexities as our quadratic, okay, I can write it like that, it would be quadratic runtime complexities always, okay, whether this uh, uh, power is 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on, okay, I will be defining as quadratic runtime complexities and I can define this quadratic runtime complexities as uh, bigger of n square, okay, so that is why mm, I think I already showed you, uh, so that is why actually we define this quadratic runtime complexity as uh, bigger of n square, okay, instead of taking uh, cube uh, and uh, 4, okay, or 5, 6 and so on, okay. Uh, now guys, here I can give you the same card example. Now let's say uh, you have uh, some of the cards, okay? Now if I tell you, just try to figure out like uh, number three card uh, with all the symbols, okay? All the symbols you are having in the card list, okay? So first of all, what you will do? Uh, you will first of all look for, uh, let's say this symbol, this three particular card, okay? So once you got this particular card, then again you will look for this symbol, okay? And this three card, okay? So once you got it, again you will uh, go to this particular card, again you will look for this symbol, this three, okay? Once it is done, again you will uh, look for this symbol, this three. Okay, that's how you are doing one task actually multiple time. Okay, so that is why actually we call it as quadratic runtime complexities. And guys, uh, whenever I'm talking about the graph of this quadratic runtime complexities, as you can see, this is the graphs looks like. Okay, uh, so as your input data size increases, so this is the graph actually it will look like. Okay, so previously I think you uh, already saw like our constant uh, graph as well as the linear graph, and uh, if you just compare them all together, so you will see this is like very worst case scenario. Okay, in this case. And after discussing all the runtime complexities, okay, I will uh, like plot all the curve together and I will uh, show you, okay, uh, like how it will look like, okay. So as of now, just try to get it like this is the uh, quadratic runtime complexity graph, okay. So guys, uh, this was all about our quadratic runtime complexities. I hope you got the idea, like why we call it as quadratic runtime complexities, okay. And uh, we never uh, considered this quadratic runtime complexities in our code, okay. So whenever we are getting these kinds of runtime complexity, that means that code is like very bad. So we always need to fix that particular code, okay. So yes, guys, this is all about from this video. I hope you uh, got the clear cut idea. So thank you so much, guys, for watching this video and I'll see you next time.